As vote counting gets underway in Solomon Islands, China and Australia are watching closely to see how results might shape relations in the region. Stephen Jejets joins us from Honiara. Look, Yvonne, it's going to take a good while for us to get a result here in Solomon Islands. Uh, that's because, look, it's a large archipelago. It's got settlements strewn everywhere, uh, many of them fairly remote. So it's going to take quite a bit of time for all of the ballots to be brought back to the regional counting centres, or in some cases to Honiara, uh, and to have all of the ballots counted. So the best estimate from observers here is that could take a week or so, perhaps even longer, perhaps a week and a half or two weeks. And then after that, of course, you've got the, the really long, shifting and unpredictable process of political negotiation which follows that. So you put all of that together, uh, you could argue that it's likely to take perhaps a month until we get a new government, perhaps even longer, like it did last time, about six weeks or so. Predictions here are really fraught because it's very, very difficult to, to say exactly how long all these things will take. Uh, but let's put it this way, we're certainly not going to get anything in substantive in the next few days, although we will be keeping a very close eye on some of those individual constituents, constituencies as those results begin to drop. We'll probably start to see those first few results over the next couple of days. Uh, and so all eyes will be on that, and in particular the seat of uh, East Choisul, held by the, uh, the Prime Minister, Manasse Sokovare, to see whether he can take that first critical step towards returning to power, which is winning his own seat. And Stephen, have the media and observers been able to carry out the jobs relatively smoothly? What have you seen in Honiara today? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Solomon Islands Election Commission has done a really good job, at least with the, the media. I mean, I, I think overall this election has been pretty successful. It's been quiet. Uh, it's run pretty well. It's been orderly. There were some complaints in Solomon Island, in Honiara here in the capital about the long queues that people had to face sometimes to vote. Uh, but broadly speaking, the election has run really smoothly and most people here are just very, very happy to have the opportunity to cast their vote. As for the media, yeah, I mean, the election authorities here have done a very good job. We've had free access to everything. We've been able to go in and check out all of the ballots as they've been counted. We had free access to the polling stations yesterday. Certainly the Election Commission here has been really keen to do everything to, that's needed to, to help us do our job. So that's a really good sign for the, the state of democracy in Solomon Islands, at least on this count, it's in really good health. And Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister Richard Miles spoke earlier. How important is it to Australia to maintain good relations with Solomon Islands? Look, obviously this is an election that's really consequential, uh, not just for Solomon Islands, but also for the wider region and for, for other players in Solomon Islands, like Australia and China in particular. Look, Australia, it's no secret, there are many in Canberra who would rather Manasseh Sogavare did not return to power. They're very uncomfortable about the way that he's hewed very closely to China, the fact that he's praised China's political system, uh, the fact that he's allowed Chinese police into the country as uh, part of training teams and that he's signed this deeply contentious security pact with China. All of these things make Australia deeply uneasy. But Australia simply has to work with whoever wins this election, whether that's Manasse Sokovare coming back or someone else. Now, it's always a difficult balancing act because Australia is aware of the power disparity here. It's a much bigger country with a much bigger and more prosperous economy. And there are always sensitivities in places like Solomon Islands about that power imbalance. Uh, there's also an awareness in Australia that many politicians in Solomon Islands have a really mixed view towards Australia. Yes, there's an enormous amount of gratitude uh, towards Australia's role, for example, through the Ramsey operation, which saw Australian troops stay here for almost 20 years to restore order at a time when Solomon Islands was in a, it was in a terrible, terrible state with riot and disorder, you know, essentially bringing the country to its knees. Yes, there's appreciation for Australia's role as the major aid donor in the country. But there's also uh, sometimes a sense of lingering frustration about, uh, about Australia's role, a sense that too much aid money, for example, is funnelled through through consultancies, a sense of frustration about what is perceived fairly or unfairly about patronising Australian attitudes. And we see that really encapsulated in, in what Manasse Sokovare often says. So it's a complicated relationship. There's no doubt that Australia is the most important player uh, in Solomon Islands. And there's no doubt that many people in Solomon Islands regard Australia very well. You simply have to go around as an, as an Australian journalist in Honiara 
and ask people about Australia, almost universally you get a very, very positive response. But it is a complex political picture, particularly when it comes to Solomon Islands elites. Australia is aware that China is well resourced, that it's intent on building up its political, economic and security links with Solomon Islands, that it's both well resourced and patient. That does present some really sharp strategic challenges to Australia and that's something that all Australian politicians and officials here in Honiara have to navigate very carefully and will continue to have to navigate very carefully even after this election, no matter who's victorious. Stephen, thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. Appreciate it.